fellow Steven Universe fans, it's finally time to start on everybody's favorite war criminal, Rose Quartz. She's the final doll in my Steven Universe series, at least for now, so I hope you enjoy the ensuing chaos. So Rose is a very tall lady, so of course I needed to use the big sister doll. At first I had planned to use Headmistress Bloodgood since her skin tone was close, but... I'll explain later. At this point during my Rose quest, what I wanted to do was take this Draculaura head and match it to the body. Honestly, Draculaura's skin tone would be more appropriate for Rose, but eh, what are you going to do? Anywho, as you can see, pastels work great on adding some yellow tones to the head. I sprayed with Mr. Super Clear each layer to build up that color. After about four layers or so of pastel, I sprayed her one more time, and then it's time for penciling in the eyes. So, I'm not sure I should talk spoilers or not, but I guess I should say spoiler warning for anyone who hasn't seen the latest season of Steven Universe. Okay, so... Oh my god, the pink diamond reveal. I cannot believe I missed all the hints. I mean, her amazing healing powers, her ability to raise the frickin' dead, and so many other things I should have known a single rose quartz couldn't do. Oof, I'm getting so excited just thinking about it. <laughs> And yeah, I know her being Pink Diamond really puts her in e an even more villainous light, honestly. And I gotta tell you, my husband would be the first to tell you how much this annoys the crap out of him. Uh, actually, hold on a second. I'll, I'll get him and let him rant on for a bit for you. <laughs> uh, hi, this is um, Fred, uh, Candy's husband. Um... She has asked me to sit here uh, while she uh, is sculpting her next uh, model to talk about my feelings on... I can get into spoilers and stuff? Yeah, you can just... Uh, my feelings on the reveal in the uh, most recent Stephen Bomb um, that uh, Stephen is in fact... Uh, that, that Rose Quartz, who is Stephen, uh, is in fact Pink Diamond. And I, <laughs> uh, I have thoughts... Uh, on this particular... I mean, it's a twist that everyone kind of saw coming, right? But anyway, so... So Rose Quartz is... Pink Diamond is essentially a revolutionary cosplay. Um, the entirety of this massive conflict that we've been watching uh, the, the whole time where Steven has had to come to some very relatable uh, feelings concerning what his what his mother did as a revolutionary, whether what she did was ethical or whether what she did was just. You have the whole heart arc with um, Bismuth and, and what went on there. And it's revealed that all of that was essentially a very elaborate episode of Undercover Bosses. Um, and on top of that, I think for me, what gets me the angriest is this notion that Pink Diamond, first of all, who is a child, everything we're presented with in, the, in these flashbacks that Steven has demonstrates her to be immature. Um, that, that's fine, you can have a, one of these diamonds who's maturing and you get to experience that. Anyway, but Pink Diamond uses her... Pearl essentially is Pink Diamond's handmaiden, so she's already a subservient character, and... Pink Diamond uses her ability, there's aliens, they're not magical creatures, uses her hierarchical ability to silence Pearl about everything that, about the big secret. She literally, physically is incapable of talking about the big secret. And we have spent all of these seasons going through the emotional journey of Pearl's deep, deep love for a woman who literally stripped her agency away so she could go play pretend. That's messed up. That is a really messed up emotional dynamic. And um, on top of that, or I guess getting to the core of that, all of this sums up to the fact that Pink Diamond, when everything went out of control and and uh, the gem war, the homeworld war, whatever it's called, I forget what that whole conflict is called, um... 
she doesn't actually come forward. Like, when it's clearly getting out of hand, she doesn't go, wait, 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 time out, no, it was actually me, ha ha, surprise. No, she just rides it out. She, she rides it out until she's literally not a person anymore, until she becomes Steven. So she avoids any responsibility for all these gems who get... Uh, I think some of them do get shattered, right? Yeah. Some gems... So, yeah, there's actual, like... The cluster. Right, there's the, the whole issue with the cluster and all of these other gems who, who are kind of condemned to being... Uh, mind shards. Like, they're literally their psyches are destroyed. Uh... White Diamond becoming... Actually, all of the, the big, tall, with the exception of blue, like yellow and white becoming tyrants. And all of the, the horrible stuff that happens on Homeworld. All of it because Pink Diamond wanted to play pretend and then it got real. And she was just like, oh, no, I think I can dodge responsibility completely on this. Um... And she probably could have saved Earth if she was just kind of like, ha ha, just kidding. I mean, let's yeah, let's not go into the fact that gems, as like the creatures that are gems, are not uh, cool alien, you know, cool alien babes from beyond the stars. They're they're reapers. Like everything you watch in the show, they're creatures that go to planets with organic life and just. And just like strip all of the life energy out of it to perpetuate themselves. It's not surprising that they use virus imageries in their their replicate in their kindergarten uh, replicator things. Um, but yeah, so so it's just all of that's aside. The whole personal dynamic of Pink Diamond s skating across the finish line, not n not having to face any of the consequences. For anything that she did as Rose Quartz, and essentially, even if unknowingly, foisting all of that on Steven. And, I mean, I have my own issues with Steven towards the end. I don't know if I'm going to get into that. No, this video's only going to be like 15 minutes long. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's called social justice, it's not called social forgiveness. Uh, the, the, the diamonds don't just get to bring everyone back and go, ha, uh, no harm, no foul, right? Um, anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So that's that's me ranting for, for almost six minutes about Pink Diamond and every, how incredibly awful and what a terrible war criminal she is. And it's really annoying that Steven has to face the consequences of that and not her. All right, I'll, I'll shut up now. Okay, I think Fred feels a lot better getting all of that out of his system. <laughs> Sorry about the tangent. I just felt Fred could articulate things a little bit better than I. And look at that, the face-up is done. <laughs> So using Headmistress Bloodgood's body, I start thickening her up, starting with the boobs. Since she's in such a poofy dress, I don't have to worry about her hips or legs, so that's a plus. that to dry, I get to work on dyeing her hair. I'm using Manic Panic and Cotton Candy. Fortunately, I have a bunch of white alpaca begging for some color. Alright, now back to the body. Uh, it's a bit of a jump here. I'm using craft foam for her skirt since I, I know nothing of sewing. <laughs> I will say that at this point, this is my third attempt and my second doll. Oh yes, I messed up, got mad, and just grabbed my spare Navara Denial, denial doll and just started all over. Look at this, look how far I got. And then I freaking messed it all up. 
probably don't think I did and think it looks good, but you're not holding it in your hand. Ah, oh well, meh. meh. So, yeah, <laughs> this time around, what I'm doing is making folds and holding them together with super glue. I split the top part of her dress into four pieces, and when it's assembled, she's got the start of a dress, to be honest. Oh, I should point out that I sanded down the epoxy once it dried and used an X-Acto to carve out that star shape. I think in my rage, I forgot to record that part because I cannot find it anywhere. I get the top layer of the dress done, I do the same thing three more times to give it layers. I uh, seem to have lost that part of the video though, I'm sorry guys. At this point, I start lightening her skin using a mix of paint and pastels on the joints. I ended up blushing her shoulder area because I was having a hard time getting the skin as light as I wanted with just pastels. Now I use pretty much all of my white paint to start her massive dress. Seriously, I need to own a big tube of white paint in the future because damn, I needed a lot of paint for this. There we go, looking good. After everything is painted, I apply some white pearl shimmer to everything to give it a nice mild sparkle. And once that's all done, I cover it all in Duraclear matte varnish to keep it from sticking and then it's finally time for her gem. Right. I know it's hard to tell, but she is actually taller than Garnet, even without her big hair. All right, as for the hair, here we go. <laughs> like usual, I apply the hair using Mod Podge, but Elmer's glue works just as good in my opinion. Get ready guys for a really ugly looking process, uh, but I promise the end result will look nice.
Okay, once all the hair is in, I get to styling, starting with her bangs. I trim them down using an eyebrow razor. All right, time for her curls. This ended up being more of a challenge than I thought. I really wanted her front curls as tight as can be. Unfortunately, unlike synthetic hair, alpaca is a natural fiber, so the curls would loosen in time. In the end, what I did was take a thin strand of her hair and using a needle, I slide it through the middle of the curl. And then I tied it in a tight knot and that surprisingly worked to keep the curls tight. And with that, she's done. Oh, what a fun project. I really enjoyed making these girls. I really wish I had videos for Garnet and Amethyst, but when life gets in the way, you know? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.